Black women preachers who changed and are changing history. As black women remain the heartbeat of the black church, they are also clergy women and changemakers revolutionizing faith. By Candace Marie Benbow. Dated March 8, 2022. Black women have been the backbone of the black church and the vanguards of ministry, in and out of the pulpit. This Women's History Month, we take a moment to lift black clergy women who stood in the full power of their call and identity and charted new territory for generations of black women coming behind them. Through their sermons and writings, they leave a legacy of faith and black feminism, repeat black feminism, repeat black feminism. Britannica.com Feminism Sociology Fact-checked by the editors of Encyclopedia Britannica Last updated, December 16, 2023 What is feminism? At its core, feminism is the belief in full social, economic, and political equality for women. Feminism largely arose in response to Western traditions that restricted the rights of women, but feminist thought has global manifestations and variations. What are Western countries? Western countries, also referred to as the Western world, generally encompass nations located in Europe, North America, and Oceania. The concept of Western countries is often associated with certain cultural, political, and economic characteristics that have historically influenced these regions. These countries have played a significant role in shaping global history, politics, and culture, and they are often seen as representing a particular set of values and ideals. The idea of the Western world originated from the ancient Greeks and Romans and it has evolved over time to include various nations that share common historical, philosophical, and societal roots. Western countries are often characterized by democratic governance, respect for human rights, the rule of law, technological advancements, and economic prosperity. They have been at the forefront of scientific and technological innovation, leading in fields such as medicine, engineering, and information technology. However, it is important to acknowledge that the concept of the Western world has been subject to criticism and debate. Some argue that it carries an inherent bias and Eurocentrism, as it tends to prioritize Western values and perspectives over those of other regions. The notion of the Western world has been used to perpetuate a hierarchy of civilizations, often neglecting the contributions and perspectives of non-Western societies. Additionally, there are countries that do not neatly fit into the traditional Western category due to their unique historical and geopolitical contexts. For example, Countries in Latin America or the Caribbean have cultural and historical ties to both Western and non-Western civilizations, creating a complex blend of influences. In recent years, there has been a growing recognition of the need to challenge the Western-centered perspective and embrace a more inclusive and multicultural approach. This involves acknowledging the diversity of cultures, histories, and contributions from all regions of the world. It is essential to move away from simplistic categorizations and engage in a more nuanced understanding of global interconnections and shared humanity. Presenter added caveat to summarize this article. Referring to quote the West, Western countries or Western culture refers to all things European, or so-called white, when we are actually red in color because our blood shows through our skin. No one is the color white or black. Because the European Gentile Christian religions refuse to read what they call the Old Testament, 
they err in knowing the scriptures relating to an issue that the very Gentiles themselves created. The only confusion that exists on this matter are people's understanding. The European Gentiles that have usurped the role and duties of the Israelites in preaching and teaching. If it were not for the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai initiating the Ezekiel 37 prophecy before the eyes of the Gentiles and heathen, they would have complete control of all minds and understanding upon the earth. It is extremely interesting and deceptive to think that Paul welcomed non-Israelite Gentiles into the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Might be the reason Gentile teachings cannot understand his explicit words that women cannot teach. The scriptures in question are Paul's letter to Timothy and the Corinthians. Those were Israelite congregations. How do we know? Every one of Paul's letters says brethren. The definition of brethren are those related by blood. That's what it means when you look up the word brethren. Every letter of Paul has the letter brethren. He even says in the Corinthians that they were once Gentiles carried away by those dumb idols, those dumb idols being those of the Gentiles and the heathen. So the scripture in question reads, 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach. Now the scripture doesn't end there, but they like to stop there and we're going to go through the entire thing. So teach, it means to conduct oneself as a teacher. You see there in green, under to teach, A, B, and C, it says to hold discourse with others in order to instruct them, deliver didactic discourses. What is a didactic discourse? It is something that is intended to teach or to improve morals by teaching. This is what the law, statutes, and commandments do. Teach us about moral behavior, social behavior, ceremonial behavior, dietary behavior. That's what it teaches us. Now B, to be a teacher. C, to discharge the office of a teacher, conduct oneself as a teacher. And going down under to teach one, we see B and D, instill doctrine into one because that is what a teacher is supposed to do doctrine being a teaching, and to explain or expound a thing. This is what we call in the scriptures, giving the sense. You see, and right now, all of Christianity does not have the sense to obey the law, statute, and commandments in the faith of Hamashiach Yahushai. Regardless of the Gentiles' attempts, at conjuring up reasons for Paul's statement. On the contrary, let's read all in context because the scripture did not begin or cease at suffering a woman not to teach. The chapter is about instructions for worship in the assembly, that is the congregation of the Israelites. Do what thou wilt in those Gentile churches as it is this day. First Timothy 2, verses 8 to 15. Verses 9 to 15 are, are concerning women instructed. Verse 8, I, speaking of Paul, will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Verse 9, 
in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, that is apparel that does not cause sexual attention, with shamefacedness, which means through an idea of downcast eyes, respect and bashful, and sobriety, which means self-control. Not with broided hair, which means braided or weaved together, or gold or pearls or costly array. Now this is what the actual definition of each one of these words mean. Let's go over modest apparel. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel, which is that that does not call sexual attention. You don't find that in these churches and you certainly don't find that, find that in the world because women are wearing revealing clothing, whether that be high skirts, low cleavage lines, they're wearing tight clothing to show their shape. No matter what size they are, whether they're small, medium, or large, they're wearing tight clothing. That is apparel that is immodest, immodest, immodest apparel. That is apparel that is causing sexual tension because the woman is exposing herself. She's exposing her body. Shamefacedness. You do not find this in society today amongst women. They do not have the idea of downcast eyes, of humbleness, which in fact shows respect. It shows some humility and bashfulness. You do not find this. You have women out here with a spirit, trying to have the spirit of a man, to the point that you have in this society, women that call themselves men, as well as men that call themselves women. Now, sobriety, self-control. If the Lord says to do something, meaning thou shalt and thou shalt not, then that's what we should do. Operating outside of that is a lack of self-control. Now, this is very interesting when I came across this, not with broided hair. There's a lot of braiding and weaving amongst so-called black women. And this is the literal definition of this word. So we have a situation here where we are, we are violating the instructions given to us through Paul from the Most High Yahweh in His only begotten Son's name, Yahweh Shai. The mention of gold, pearls, and costly array doesn't get into why. However, we won't get into a situation where we try to interpolate the way that uh, Christians have interpolated this letter to Timothy. We won't get into that. That's something that you can take and think about yourself and come to a conclusion. It's, it's very, very clear to me what it means when it says it recommends against wearing gold or pearls or costly array. Okay, verse 10. But which becometh women professing godliness, godliness is doing the things that the Lord said to do with good works, with good works, let the woman learn in silence. Silence means quietness and peaceable. With all subjection. With all subjection. Which means obedience, the act of subjecting and subordination. Now, there's another word that women do not like. Women do not like the word submit. Same thing as obedience. Same thing as act of subjecting. Same thing as subordination. This is what the Lord requires. It is what it, the Lord requires. So we're going to see what the definition of silence is to prove this. You know, I'm not just throwing this lesson together with my own words. I use the definition of the words that are actually published and researched. So it is the word hesukia. Hesukia, that is the word for silence. And you see, the first one, the first Roman numeral is quietness. And it says the description of the life of one who stays at home doing his own work and does not officiously meddle with the affairs of others. Another word for that would be gossip. Another word for that would be gossip, a busybody, bustling. All right? And then Roman numeral two is silence. Now, when we look down at the Strong's definitions, we see that it says desistance from bustle or language, talking, 
against talking language is talking, quietness, silence. Obviously, if you're talking, you're not silent and you're not in quietness. You're talking. So you need to be in quietness and silence. Now, we're going to take a look at what the definition of all subjection means. As I said and inserted for understanding, obedience, act of subjecting, or subordination. On the left, okay, the Greek word here for all subjection is huat age. Huat age. And we see that Roman number one, the act of subjecting. Roman number two, obedience, subjection. And we see the Strong's definition, subordination. Subordination. We look to the right because this is the root word on the right is hup at atso. Hup at atso. And we see, we're going to read everything in green. Roman number one, to arrange under, to subordinate. Roman number two, to submit, put in subjection, because some people have to be put in subjection, which is what Paul was doing in 2 Timothy. That's what he was doing in this scripture. What he was doing was saying that women needed to be put in subjection. Roman number three, to subject oneself or obey. Roman numeral four, to submit to one's control. Roman numeral five, to yield to one's admonition or advice. The advice of Paul in this case. The advice of this presenter who is doing the work of the Lord. Roman numeral six, to obey, be subject. And it goes on to further explain additional information from the outline of biblical usage. This word was a Greek military term, meaning, quote, to arrange troop divisions in a military fashion under the command of a leader, end quote. In non-military use, it was, quote, a voluntary attitude of giving in, cooperating, assuming responsibility, and carrying a burden, end quote. Okay, if you look down there further, I didn't highlight it, but in the Strong's definition, you see to subordinate, reflexively to obey, be under obedience, meaning be obedient, put under, subdue onto, submit, you could say, be or make subject to or onto, be put in subjection or to or under. To put in subjection to or under and submit self onto. There's no way that this can be misinterpreted. You're reading what you're reading. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. All right, so it's more to it. There's more to it than just the woman suffering not a woman to teach. You have to read the whole thing and take it into in the context as to why this is happening. Verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if, if, if they, those women, continue in faith and charity, charity being to love in a social, moral sense, and holiness, holiness is being set apart, or to purify internally by renewing of the mind with sobriety, sobriety meaning self-control. The reason why a woman is saved in childbearing is talking about saving her descendants, especially after the mistake, the grave mistake that Eve caused that caused all of mankind the penalty of death. So if she is teaching her children, that, that is childbearing, to follow the laws, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Mashiach Awashai, that is how she is saved. Her descendants are saved, the seed being planted by the man in her womb. And seed just means descendants in the case for a woman. So to be clear, these women, when they properly instruct their children in righteousness, which is the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, in accordance with Deuteronomy 6 and 25, then they will have the hope of being of their progeny, their descendants, whether they be male or female, to be saved. Verse 
The following scripture answers the question and ends the Gentile Christian debates on the matter of can women be pastors. The Lord appoints Moses' successor. The Lord appoints Moses' successor. The Lord appoints Moses' successor. This is in Numbers chapter 27, verses 15 to 16. And Moses spake unto the Lord Yahweh, saying, Let the Lord Yahweh, the power of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. The congregation, by definition, is the assembly of Israelites. That's what that means. The first congregation in the wilderness was the Israelites. The Gentiles doing nothing but mimicking and taking from the Hebrew writings and Hebrew teachings. That's all they're doing. But let us review the scripture in context because we don't want to take one scripture and try to isolate it, which in some cases we can, but we're going to look at the context of this. So we're going to be taking a look at Numbers chapter 27, verses 15 through 17. 15. And Moses spake unto the Lord Yahweh, saying, Let the Lord Yahweh, the power of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. Set a man over the congregation. 17 which may go out before them, meaning proceed to or towards something. In this case, it's talking about war, and which may go in before them, which means fall or light upon. Light means to fight, punch, fight, attack enemy, coming back from doing that. And which may lead them out, which may lead them out, and which may bring them in to go out to war and come back. Because remember, we're talking in this, during this time, we, the Israelites were being prepared to go into the land of Canaan to take the land. That the congregation of the Lord, Yahweh, be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So anything other than setting a man over the congregation is as sheep which have no shepherd. If you have a woman or a Gentile over the congregation of Israelites, they are as sheep which have no shepherd. It's very, very clear. Now we're going to take a look at the meaning of these words. All flesh. It is the Hebrew word basal. And we see under uh, Roman number 1a of body of humans of animals. Why? Because Adam was given dominion or rulership over the anim of all animals in the, in the water, the sky, and on land. He named the animals. That's why it says that, uh, of the body of humans, of animals. Going down to uh, D, we're doing this in context. There's some other, def other applications as well. We're going to go down to D. It says, D O Delta. It says kindred, which are blood relations. You see? So we are over the Gentiles. And we are over, we're talking about a family of Israelites, the 12 tribes. Okay? Like I said, the, the Gentiles are mimicking what we did in the Hebrew Scriptures. That's all they're doing. Unfortunately, they've usurped it. Like I said earlier, they've taken it over. And now they're trying to tell you how it works. And the, Israelite, the Lord has raised up the Israelites today to tell His people and the Gentile how it actually works. So F, it says all living things. Again, it goes back up there to A of the body, humans, and of animals. And then uh, H, mankind. That's why I was saying all mankind over the Gentiles. This is what is meant to be, and this is what it's going to be like in the kingdom. Now, in the Strong's definitions, we see it says um, flesh from its freshness by extension the body or person, you see. And the pupenda of a man is a sexual organ, right? This is the, this, this another definition. Uh, but not applicable in this case. So we're going to look at the definition of man because there's a Hebrew word for man 
and it has a different Hebrew word for women. So you might think the saying man is all everybody, right? Well, we're about to find out right now. In some cases it is, but in this case, in context, it's going to be very specific. So the Hebrew word for man is ish, ish, okay? And it means under Roman numeral one and a, man, male, parenthetically it says what? In contrast to woman or female. You see that? So set a man over the congregation, all right? In contrast to a woman or female. So it is a male, a man. You see that? And guess what? Under uh, Delta there, D, that man is the servant of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, now we're going to go down to Strong's definitions. We're going to start where it's highlighted in green. A man as an individual or a male person. We're going to skip down. Uh, it's uh, everyone. And we're going to skip over fellow. Fellow being like a fellow man in context, okay? Footman, husband man, then good, mighty, or great, mighty. Man, he, high degree, him that is, husband, man or mankind, none, one, people, person, steward, a custodian of something, be responsible for someone else's property and possessions. What man, what man soever, what man soever or whatsoever, and then whosoever. Again, this is when you go to New Testament, it says, Whosoever believe on the name of Yahweh Shai Mashiach shall be saved. Those are the Israelites. Whosoever worthy. And if you hear that noise in the background, that's my son who has autism. Uh, nothing strange going on. He's just happy. He's having a good time. Okay, so now we see, uh, we're going to take a look at congregation. We're going to take a look at congregation. The Hebrew word is Ada. Ada. Okay, so we're going to take a look at, you no, know it means congregation, also means gathering on the outline of biblical usage. We're going to take a look at the Strong's definition. And it says, in the original sense of fixture, a stated assemblage, meaning specifically a concourse, or generally a family or crowd, because the 12 tribes are related. Assembly, company, congregation, multitude, people, the Lord's people, the children of Yisrael, the children of the Lord. All right, and we're not done yet because you're, you're saying, okay, well, that doesn't prove it's the Israelites. Well, yes, it does right here. When you look at the lexicon, it says it, where it's highlighted, the congregation of the Israelites. The congregation of the Israelites. The congregation of the Israelites. There is no other congregation. There's no congregation of the Gentiles. It doesn't exist. There's no, there's no congregation of the Canaanites. There's no congregation of the Edomites. There's no congregation of Ishmael. It's the congregation of the Israelites. Okay, now, in the same chapter also, it tells us about the congregation. In the same chapter. And it's in Numbers chapter 27, verse 20. And thou, Moses, talk about Moses, shall put some of thine honor upon him, speaking of Joshua, that all the congregation of the children of Yisrael may be obedient. You see that? And so it was the, the spirit that was upon Moses. He used to put upon Joshua that all the congregation of the children of Yisrael may be obedient. Now, a little more information on this. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai, his face shone. It was bright and he had to cover it up because the people were afraid of him. All right, this is what we're talking about. So uh, the countenance of Joshua must have been changed in some way, likened unto Moses, that would put the fear upon the congregation of the children of Yisrael to be obedient. And we don't have that today. You see, we have brothers on the highways and byways that are teaching and people aren't afraid. They come up and do all kinds of things that they shouldn't do, say all kinds of things they shouldn't say because they don't have any fear of the promise of the Lord. But there is coming come a day, there is gonna come a day when we are gonna be given the power, the spiritual power, and then it's gonna be a wrap 
It's going to be a wrap for our people that are disobedient. It's going to be a wrap for these Gentiles that are running amok and have been running amok for thousands of years. So now let's take a look at the definition of woman. I suffer not a woman to teach. All right. So we see here, this is the Hebrew word is Isha. Isha. All right. So we go over to the outline of biblical usage, Roman number one, it's woman, wife, female. Under A alpha, it says woman, the opposite of man, woman, opposite of man. And then B bravo, wife, woman, married to a man. This is very, very, very simple when you look up some of these words so that you don't get confused. Man does not always mean just mankind. It does mean man, male, the opposite of woman. It does mean it sometimes. And in this case, that's exactly what it is. Moving on. In Numbers 27, 18 to 21, the Lord Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, appointed Joshua to succeed Moses. He didn't choose any of the women that were of the children of Israel, and he certainly didn't choose any of the, the heathen that are part of the mixed multitude that came out of Egypt. There were servants and handmaids to the Israelites once we got out of Egypt. Now, if that wasn't enough, I'm going to give you two more precepts. Ezekiel 34 verse 31, where Israel is the most highest flock. And ye, speaking of the Israelites, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men. The flock of my pasture are men. The flock of my pasture are men. And I am your power, saith the Lord, power. You can't get around this. There's no way you can mix this up. There's no misinterpretation. It says what it says, and Paul said what he said. Now, I'm going to give you the second one. Now, this is a small text. You might not be able to read it, but you can break it out on your own, in your own Bible, Revelation. I wanted this all on one page, all in context, and doesn't have to be separated between slides. So if you have a cell phone, you can, you can um, increase the size. And if you're on a big screen TV, it's perfect, perfect viewing on a big screen TV. You have it all right there to see, and to see that we're not lying to you. We're telling you exactly what the word of the Lord says. So this is Revelation chapter seven, verses one to eight. It's about the 144,000 sealed by the Most High. After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now there's a meaning to the earth, the sea, and the tree. You won't get into it right now. Verse 2, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads, in their minds. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of what? Of who? Of all the tribes of the children of Yisrael. The men, that is, okay? Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. And then it goes on. Of the tribe of Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin, were sealed 12,000, equaling 144,000. There is no scripture where women are appointed to leadership roles within the 12 tribes. They're never appointed as officers, never appointed as captains, never appointed as elders, and never appointed as heads of families. Now, you can do your tax return in, in, in Babylon the Great and say had a household as a woman, but that is not so by the word of the Most High Yahweh, and name is God and Son, Yahushua Mashiach.
However, there is scripture and a multitude of it where men were appointed to leadership of the 12 tribes. They were, men were appointed as officers, men were appointed as captains, men were appointed as elders, and men were the heads of families. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahushua and Mashiach. Now, this is what the unrepentant Israelites and the Gentiles are actually doing when they don't listen to the explicit words of Paul, nor the explicit word that came from the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His begotten Son, Yahushua and Mashiach. Psalm 56 and 5. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. See, you wrestle with the Lord's words. And because of that, because you do that, your thoughts, because you're not doing the right thing and you're twisting it, your thoughts are actually evil towards the Lord. So that you can understand. Now, hopefully you see that. Genesis 6 and 5. And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, his mind was only evil continually. It's only saying that you're doing the opposite of what the Lord wants. That's what it means. Okay. And that makes you wicked. That makes what you're doing wickedness. All right. All these men, they didn't all, they weren't hundred percent evil. They did some good things. However, when you're not doing what the Lord says, it's you're wicked, you operate in wickedness, and you, your mind is evil. The thoughts of your, your heart are evil. Now, although men are usurped among the Gentiles' religion, repentant Israelites will not allow this heresy within our families nor congregations. We're not going to allow it. We're going to be separate. We're going to be holy. So when you look at these two scriptures, you cannot say that there's a misinterpretation. We're going to read them again. We're going to close this out. Numbers 27, verse 15 to 17. And we're going to stop this one at 16. And Moses spake unto the Lord Yahweh, saying, Let the Lord Yahweh, the power of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. And Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31. But where we find out that Yisrael is the most highest flock. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your power, saith the Lord, power. Now, we are the flock of the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Mashiach, and the women of the Israelites are, are the Most Highs as well. But there's an issue where the Most High is going to separate the man from the woman, in respect to understanding, respect to leadership. And the man is not equal to Yahweh Shai Mashiach. The man is not equal to the Most High Yahweh. And conversely, the woman is not equal to the man. And the woman is not equal to Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And the woman is not equal to the Most High Yahweh. The man was made in the image, the Israelite man was made in the image of the Most High Yahweh. And the woman was taken out of the band. Remember the man's rib. So the woman is not the image of the Most High Yahweh, the man is. That is how it works, that thus saith the Lord. And that's going to conclude the thorough answer to, can women be pastors? The answer is no. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushua, Hallelujah.